Hello, my name is Leslie Forstadt. I'm from the University of Maine Cooperative Extension. I'm the human development specialist and I focus a lot on farm stress and farm family and farm team resilience building. Uh, in this first session, we're going to talk briefly about dealing with stress uh, related to uh, families and family structures and farm teams, COVID-19, and how it really affects decision making and signs and symptoms to look out for, uh, for when you might be feeling overwhelmed by the stresses that you're experiencing. I'd like to thank uh, Anna and Mafka for making this presentation possible. So our facilitators for the rest of the session are Karen Grote from Family and Community Mediation, Polly Shaika uh, from Village Side Farm, and myself from Cooperative Extension. We are also all part of a farm coaching team that I will tell you about later on in the presentation. So when we think about stressors, there's both ordinary and extraordinary stressors. And uh, farming is an inherently stressful occupation and it uh, historically has been one of the most stressful occupations that there is. And common ordinary stressors on farms include uh, financial concerns, division of labor, who does what and how resulting decisions are made, conflict resolution, and this can include conflict between team members, it can be family members from multiple generations or within a generation, uh, it can be uh, with employees and employers, it can be even with customers. And how do we resolve conflicts to maintain positive relationships? Uh, marketing, certainly always an issue. How do you reach your customers and um, what's the best way to do it and at different times in the season? Intergenerational communication from the perspective both of conflict but also of farm transfer and how much are people attending to and paying attention to uh, the needs of the elder and younger generations and how um, communication happens. There is historically uh, the notion of balance was never really an issue that's more of a contemporary concern. But even so now what does balance look like when your farm is your home and your life is your farm and how do you uh, separate when need be and take time for yourself and that's not related to business. For many it involves developing a plan to resolve these issues and um, that's a common stressor, a common need, not necessarily something that people always do but um, it's something that, that, people, that people consider. Now when we start to think about uncommon or extraordinary stressors on farms. This is what's happening right now, the situation that we're in with COVID-19. Um, social distancing, how does that uh, play out both for employment, getting the work done, uh, getting sales made, even just working together as a farm team and a family, um, how do you interact and how, what's the impact and, the, and, and how do you even account for social distancing? Just even having to think about that creates an added stressor for you. For many workers uh, have not been able to arrive for a variety of reasons, whether it be quarantine, labor issues, travel, et cetera. And that uh, adds a, a burden of stress for all the people involved and certainly the business, uh, the business's success. And then the shift to really the wholesale market disappearance for many uh, with the closure of schools and other institutions because of our need to, uh, to, to be apart from one another, which led to then an immediate shift and an immediate need to pivot to a direct-to-consumer model. So this need to shift is uh, certainly one that farmers are known for being nimble and flexible in decision making, and it is potentially pushing, pushing, pushing your boundaries and your capacity for change and innovative thinking when you're under this level of needing to pivot so quickly. Accompanying this is a uh, a whole range of children <laughs> of all sorts of different ages who are now home. So whether it be college age uh, st students who've come home, who've been living away for a while and are now, um, now at home to finish up their semesters, or young children who are now needing to be outschooled or homeschooled as part of uh, their educational experience, which now adds to 
your experience as a farmer parent. Um, so then there's, then there's many of us do uh, disaster planning um, or uh, planning, planning for making plans in case something happens. And now it's essentially critical, especially critical to be doing this in case someone uh, becomes ill, uh, whether it's an employee or one of the primary farmers, what happens, what's the, what's the plan? And just so that you know, this really is being considered a disaster. It's a natural disaster. And for many, this is not, um, because this is so universal, it's so widespread, affecting markets, um, affecting consumers, and affecting the entire supply chain. This is a disaster and it takes time to recover from a disaster. So we're looking at some really long-term planning here, and which is an extraordinary stressor. This is not just a very brief event. So there were two surveys that went out in, um, in Maine related to um, COVID-19 concerns. The first survey went out in March and there, we had about 179 responses and there were an, another version went out a second second wave of the survey went out in April for 79 responses and um, this was a survey that was administered by a number of organizations collaborating on behalf of farmers to find out what the primary concerns were and the some the concerns early in March when the when the disaster was just really beginning to hit and people were considering what was going to be happening and it, moving into now where things have started to change many of the results were actually the same in terms of what folks are concerned about financial cash flow big concern for folks um, and there are starting to see changes in sales and it was similar between the the, the two surveys that there were over 50 percent are people are seeing decreases in sales and there's also a number that are seeing increases in sales so there's been an ebb and a flow in how sales are coming in and what the effect is on people as their markets are shifting and the the sales models are shifting certainly those of us who are doing weddings agritourism uh, fairs are being canceled what's the impact of that but anyone who's bringing business onto the farm through agritourism or serving um, the wedding industry or other industries, tourism that happen in Maine in the summer are definitely anticipating um, serious losses to business income this season. And then how to keep everyone healthy. This is a concern uh, for farmers in Maine, uh, so within the family, certainly, but then also how to keep employees healthy and how to have plans in place to, um, to make everyone uh, stay safe, as safe as possible every day. Some folks were concerned about mental health support, uh, that if it was needed, that it be available and how to access that. And really I have this underlined here, that the notion of uncertainty. And when you feel uncertain, it can impact your decision-making and can exacerbate the stresses that you're feeling because it can be very difficult to make decisions when you don't know what's happening next. So when we think about types of stresses, there are two types of stresses. There's acute stress and chronic stress. And uh, acute stress is really very quick. Um, it, it kind of really elicits a fight or flight response from you or a freeze, freeze response. So some people are just really ready to go and a lot of for a lot of folks this is exactly what happened when the when the coronavirus first hit um, so what do i need to do how do i take action and it's very energizing this type of stress typically resolves relatively quickly your body can can reset and get back to normal it can be very energizing it's immediate and it's intense and so once you take care of the problem once the stress happens and is resolved, it, you're able to come back down. Now, what can also happen in this kind of a situation when there's an acute stress happening, like the coronavirus coming on and all the decisions that need to be made, um, the, the people can uh, either retreat from decision making or freeze in that kind of a scenario. And at this point, we're past that in 
folks need to be making decisions um, in, in terms of the immediacy. So if people are starting to avoid decisions at this point, we're sort of moving into another area, another level of needing care and to be addressed. Um, for uh, for those with with who, for those people that that retreated or froze <laughs> early on, they've probably decided to make major changes to their markets. They've decided to uh, pull out, perhaps, or um, or they've gotten very slow. They've they've sort of gotten they've been slow to get up to speed to get the season started. So what we're moving now into, when I say that, that we sort of moved past that acute phase of stress with the coronavirus, because this is, this is starting to get, we're, we're looking long distance now, we're looking long range. The immediate stress has hit. Certainly there are new stressors every day, small acute stressors that, that pop up and can be resolved, but we're moving into a long-term sustained, really kind of an endurance <laughs> event here of what does it feel like? How is the stress managed over the long term? Especially if we're looking at thinking of this as really a disaster scenario where you're, you're, it's going to take it's going to take a year, it's going to take a, two years, and and what the normal that we return to is is unknown to to everybody. What the new normal that that there won't be a normal that we're returning to. There will be uh, a new normal that is established. So when you're stressed, when you're stressed, what happens? Your decision-making is affected, your impulse control is affected, and the coping mechanisms that you select are critically important. So during this time, what people uh, lean on as a variety, of, a variety of different ways. So your decision-making can be affected. Again, that's, you might feel, um, less certain about making some decisions. You may have to put into place new ways of making decisions, whether it's starting to have team meetings more, uh, whether it is relying on uh, talking with someone else on a regular basis, whether it, um, the intuition, if you're, if you're more of an intuitive decision maker, that intuition, because that's often based on history and your intuition has served you well, and now you're in uncharted territory. So the, the use of intuition may not be working in the way that it, that it has. So you might need to lean on other sources of expertise or other sources of information to start to make decisions that are important. So when you're stressed, your, your ability to, to control your impulses can also be affected because you, you might be feeling like you have a little bit of a shorter fuse. And with that comes the coping mechanisms that, that you select or others around you are selecting to deal with their stress. So it's not atypical that folks begin to rely more or start to rely on alcohol, drugs, nicotine, uh, because these are substances that help folks alleviate some of the symptoms of stress. So some of the, the chemical reactions that are happening in the body, some of the need to relax. And these are also so the, some of the, the coping mechanisms that people select for stress reduction include exercise or talking with others. But the ones, so there, there's help, healthy, mechanism, help, healthy coping mechanisms, unhealthy coping mechanisms, and it's starting to check in with yourself about what am I choosing? What are those around me choosing? And what kind of an impact is it having on work relationships, family relationships, work capacity, um, health overall, uh, stability of the farm, success of the farm, um, momentum of the farm? Unfortunately, in times like these, we are also seeing rates of domestic abuse uh, increasing. And what's happening is that folks don't have an outlet and don't have a way of dealing with their stress in a way that is productive. And so these are skills that can be learned. And today we're kind of just thinking about the signs and symptoms of, of depression because often that is also what's happening. When you are feeling depressed, 
It has an effect on your body, on your mood, on your behavior. You might have a headache. You might have muscle tension or pain. You may feel fatigued. Physical symptoms like your stomach is upset. You're either able to sleep and perhaps sleeping a lot or not able to sleep and somewhat having insomnia. And stress and depression can profoundly affect your mood. So maybe feeling more anxious, more restless, this feeling of overwhelm where you just can't figure out what to do next. Irritability, anger. Sometimes people make that choice of using a substance to kind of numb that out a little bit. And then trying to figure out what the, the effect on the behavior then is. Right, so what coping me mechanisms are chosen? What's the experience of stress or depression? And then how is the behavior affected? So overeating, undereating, having angry outbursts, drug or alcohol misuse, tobacco use, socially withdrawing. So if you don't have or don't lean on your social network, which for many people has changed a lot because it's not being able to go to the local coffee shop in the morning or the seed store on your way to somewhere else to run an errand because those kinds of errands aren't happening now or they don't lend themselves to the kind of informal conversation that they did previously. So in thinking about your personal experience with stress right now, here are a couple of reflection questions to consider. And if you'd like to journal, that's one way to sort of take this information and just start to think about it. Also, it's an opportunity to maybe have a conversation with someone else that you're close to. Thinking about what are your biggest stressors right now? And what are the stressors of the people that are closest to you? And with that, you can also think about how am I dealing with those stresses? So what are my biggest stressors and, and what does that really feel like? What are my coping mechanisms? Or where am I lacking coping mechanism? And likewise, what am I seeing with the folks around me? So thank you for joining me um, today. There are some opportunities that are happening. This is just a very quick presentation, really kind of an overview. I hope that you found some nuggets that have been useful or thought provoking. The, there are some of the opportunities. There's a conversation that's happening on a weekly basis hosted from uh, Donna Coffin at the University of Maine Cooperative Extension, the Maine Weekly Farmer. There's a farm coaching program that is available where farmers can meet by phone or video conference with a, up to two coaches to talk about a variety of issues, whether you're thinking about uh, what kind of stresses are happening on the farm, maybe making a communication plan. How can I uh, set something up with team meetings, with crew meetings over the course of the season, checking in with people, seeing how people are doing, given that we're not able to do that in the way that we traditionally have. Uh, farm coaching can also be used for bigger long-term things like farm transition. There's a program called the Agricultural Mediation Program, which is very useful to have a third party present if there's a conflict happening or uh, any adverse financial decision or if you're needing some credit counseling around thinking about what to do about moving forward with loans or grants. It's not, uh, it's not financial counseling in the sense of um, getting a portfolio of information given to you, but it's more uh, an opportunity to sit down and think through what kind of decisions you're making and what the ramifications of that are. And then there are some additional resources. There's a National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. There's 211, which I didn't put on the slide, but a very valuable resource in Maine to be able to call to find out if you're looking for a counselor in your area, another provider, or any kind of a service. And then there are a number of nonprofits that are available to help. Uh, you mean Cooperative Extension, lots of technical information and expertise and also our farm coaching and agricultural mediation program. Um, the Legal Food Hub with uh, legal recommendations and advice and service to, uh, to farmers. SCORE offers business planning and business advice 
There's medi mediation services, land for good, helping with farm transition planning. And then, of course, you uh, probably have a team behind you of accountants, financial planners, uh, attorneys. So all of these resources available to help. Sometimes it's a matter of getting everything uh, going and conversations going to think about the things that are, that are stressful to you and feeling like you have a team behind you that, um, that can help with the stress. So thank you very much. And um, I appreciate you joining. And uh, if you need anything, don't hesitate to reach out to Mafka and or uh, my email is uh, leslie.forstat at maine.edu. Thank you. Take care.